everyone, it's Micah. Welcome to our Wednesday reaction series, uh, and welcome to our new setup. Uh, you're used to seeing me up there perched on that there bar stool. Hopefully, this will work out better. It's I think it, to me it feels a little more cluttered than the the other setup, but uh, regardless, this is where I'm going to try out doing my videos now. This feels a lot more comfortable for me. Uh, we'll just we'll see how it goes, but. As I said, this is our Wednesday reaction series where we are looking at all of the number one songs of the 1980s. We have made it up to March of 1982. Uh, in 82, there were a lot of long running number one hits. I don't know if there was something specific happening with the chart methodology around that time that caused songs to be to, to hang out for a very long time, but this would become quite atypical later on in the 80s. We just got through uh, reacting to uh, Olivia Newton-John's Physical, which was the biggest hit of the year, uh, and it straddled 1981 and 1982, and it was number one for, what, 10 weeks or something like that, and uh, we also listened recently to, um, what was the other, um, Centerfold, which stayed number one for several weeks as well. Uh, we I have another long-running number one this week. This is I Love Rock and Roll by Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, which was number one for seven weeks between March and early May of 1982. So without a lot of effort, we have catapulted ourselves nearly halfway through 82 since, there, the, since the number ones that, uh, uh, that charted that year camped out at the top for such a long time. Uh, I'm super familiar with I Love Rock and Roll, it's pretty impossible to grow up in American culture and not know this song. It's it was everywhere when it was out. It it definitely gets used as a um, as a as a backdrop, as a reference point, as a as a sticky kind of all purpose, uh, gritty rock and roll song in the backdrop of numerous films. And uh, so it's just it's just part of the pop culture lexicon, and it does follow a trend of of quite a few uh, gritty rock and roll songs that we've heard recently uh, topping the charts, or you know fun loving gritty more minimalistic rock and roll songs. It also furthers a trend of a small trend of slightly referential uh, self referential rock and roll songs. Uh, Going back to 1980, Billy Joel had number one with it, Still Rock and Roll to Me, which was a, a very throwback 50s style rock and roll song. And then there was Crazy Little Thing Called Love, which was a tribute to Elvis uh, by Queen, which also hit number one in 1980. I feel like there was a lot of very self conscious uh, signifying around, around rock and roll around this time. I'm up for hearing it one more time. This is I Love Rock and Roll by Joan Jett and the Black Hearts.
Okay, well, um, this is, as I said, this is my first reaction video with my new setup. And with my new setup, I can actually see myself reacting um, on the on the uh, on the displays that I have set up before uh, I didn't have that distraction of being able to monitor what I looked like reacting so now I think I get what other reactors are uh, possibly doing depending on their setup where they are very self-conscious about the way they're reacting now I've always been self-conscious but I've kind of had to let let it go because I'm like you know it's out of my control and I can't see what I look like anyway but now I can, and it is dangerous. And so if you saw my, my focus wandering for a couple of seconds, it was because I couldn't help, especially this very first time reacting with this new setup, I couldn't help like sneaking a peek to see how I looked reacting <laughs> to, the, to the video. Uh, it's difficult when you have that extra feedback of seeing yourself reacting. It's difficult to not you, there's an urge there to mug for the camera and I, that's one of the things that I've always said that I really don't want to do I don't want to be doing gratuitous reactions so that it reads differently on camera I think if I were naturally that animated and I know a lot of the reactors are naturally very animated I'm just not so for me it would be a big act if I was like or or if I was dancing around you know I can do all that stuff, but I have to, you know, I would have to feel moved to, to do it. And given the fact that I know I'm being filmed, it kind of like tamps down on that. So uh, not that I need y'all to be my, my psychoanalyst uh, just yet, but those are a few of the things that were going on during that reaction. So uh, yes, you can, you know, have at it to talk about how I reacted or how it didn't didn't work for you um, I, I, I'm totally there with you on that because this is again my first time doing it this way now let's talk about the actual song and the actual video this song quite simply is a force of nature I'm pretty sure that Joan Jett thought she was going to take over the world when she released the song there's no way that you can listen to this song and not feel like you're in the grasp of something bigger than yourself. There's just songs that instantly kind of draw you in and are so singular in their focus and so universal in their in their musical sweep that you can't even remember what it was like for there to be a world without that song. And there's just a there's just a select few songs. Maybe I could probably I could probably think of maybe ten or fifteen songs in the course of my lifetime that are so epic that they that they really in my mind deserve this designation. And this is one of those songs. Uh, Taken on its face, it's a really simple song. There's nothing nuanced about it. Uh, there's nothing. There's nothing that I can hear that sounds very innovative about it, but that could be because the innovation that it ushered in was something that kind of predated most of the rock music that I listened to. So uh, I, it just might be something that I've taken for granted. So if, for those rock enthusiasts out there who can school me on how this song was different, I'd be eager to, to hear about that. But it's so simple and it's so basic in a good way. It is, the thumping drums it is the really hard-edged guitar and it's Joan Jett's scowling badass vocal delivery it is nothing else she doesn't vary her tone the guitars don't vary uh, vary their tone the drums are relentless there there are no levels to this song it's just a straight ahead um, I mean, it's not thrash metal by any means, but it's a straight ahead. And but thrashing is kind of the way I think about the 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 visceral reaction I have to the song and what it makes you kind of want to do. It, it it's a it just thrashes all the way through, start to middle to finish. Uh, it's just a relentless uh, rock and roll freight train of a song, and it just keeps going at the exact same speed with the exact same intensity for over three minutes it doesn't let up and when you have a song that's as in the pocket as this song is and you can get away with doing that a 
a, a song I think that kind of parallels it in its own way, in its own genre, is No Diggity by Blackstreet. That song is, and I, and on another reaction channel, I heard someone say this, the same thing about with, uh, with Oh Sheila by Ready for the World. When they made those songs, they understand when they did this song, they understood that what they had there was special and they knew that they didn't need to do anything other than the the very simple dynamics that they that were introduced from the first couple of seconds in the song. It was so catchy that they the creators knew that you weren't going to need anything else for the next three minutes. Just lock in on this groove and go with it and that's what they did it's just a it's 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 a classic it's 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 unflinching there's no wink and nudge there's no there there is no self-deprecating humor there's no indication that anyone is being anything other than deadly serious about what's going on here and in that way and in and in other ways the music video is perhaps the best music video that I've reacted to yet in this series I have dogged out a lot of music videos from the early 80s for being unprofessional. And even the ones I like, I'm usually sort of giving them backhanded compliments in a lot of ways, saying it's not bad for its time. Uh, but this is actually like a really good music video. And it's the first one I've seen that makes use of a really well-developed and really well-formulated intro and outro where there is a prologue before the music even starts or before the music of the the the, the song that's that the video is for even starts and um and there's and there's a a, a a coda to it there's an there is a piece of the video that keeps that that it's a, that very actively keeps on going from a video standpoint even after the audio stops and it, it, it feels very polished and put together. The editing is good, the cinematography is good, the lighting is good. It's, like I said, it's, and, it, and it really drives home the, the point, I mean, the, the pantomiming of the, when it, the only thing that looked a little cheesy was when they flashed to the, the guy she was talking to and he pantomimed the lyrics she was saying, uh, that was, you know, that's a little uh, early 80s cheesiness for you. But uh, but other than that, I felt like this video was was perfectly suited for the song and really captured that unflinching, unironic uh, spirit of the song. Joan Jett does not crack a smile. She is sneering and giving you the death look in straight into the camera the entire song there is nothing unserious about this video and it and in that way it really does capture the capture the the mood of the song perfectly and i think that's one of the key elements in making a good music video so uh this is one of those straight down the middle strikes this isn't even there's no curve balls there's no this is just someone Throwing, throwing the ball right down the I mean, I don't usually use sports metaphor, metaphors, but this is throwing the ball straight down the middle of the alley and having it like just knock down all the pins with brute force. That's what this, this song is. Uh, so very well deserved, seven weeks at number one. Iconic song. Gotta love it. Hard not to. Um, and that's, that's what I have to say about that. Uh, next week we'll get into the next number one song of 1982. Uh, Find out what it is next week. I'm, I'm through with these spoiler alerts because I, I need y'all to be cliff hung. <laughs> is that the right word for that? Uh, I need y'all to be cliff hung. I'm going to create that term. I, I want y'all to be waiting with bated breath, whatever that means, uh, for whatever comes next Wednesday. And um, until then, please like this video if you did indeed like it. Uh, I will be tweaking my lighting. I think maybe already that my face is half in the shadow please subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined and most of all make music better <laughs>